From ABC News, World News Sunday. Substituting for Forrest Sawyer, here's Carol Simpson. Good evening. One day after 11, former Soviet republics formed a new commonwealth, a 12th, Georgia, saw the eruption of large-scale violence. Reports say at least 10 people were killed and 50 were wounded in clashes early today between rival factions of Georgia's military. And after a brief truce, new fighting is reported in the capital of Tbilisi tonight. More from John Donvan. It is an old fight that reached a new stage this morning. On the streets of Georgia's capital, Tbilisi, a political power struggle that started months ago turned into a shootout for control of the parliament building. Gunmen loyal to the Georgian president defending against gunmen loyal to a former prime minister. Both sides call themselves reformers, but both are expending more energy on each other than on any reform. Georgia did not join the new Commonwealth of Independent States this weekend, which puts more distance than ever between Georgia's problems and the problems of the defunct Soviet Union. At most, Georgia serves as an example to the members of the Commonwealth of how not to resolve their differences. Those differences do exist, but Russian Republican President Boris Yeltsin and his team sound confident that the honeymoon can last. The chance for democratic solutions, uh, to my mind, out, uh, outweighed risks. Some of the risks. That Kazakhstan's president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, will stand by his refusal to give up nuclear weapons as long as Russia has them. Or that fighting among ethnic groups like the Armenians and Azerbaijanis will get worse now that there is no central power to referee. When the president of the Commonwealth Republics agreed this weekend to kill off the Soviet Union, they left undefined much of what the Commonwealth is. But its members say clearly, the Commonwealth is not one new country, but 11. Ukraine will have the independence of France. Yes. Russia will have the independence of Germany. Right. That, Mikhail Gorbachev keeps saying, will lead to chaos in this region, but all that most people want to hear from Gorbachev now is his resignation speech, expected within a few days. Meanwhile, here in Moscow, a march against the Commonwealth by a collection of elderly communists, unhappy workers, and politicians who call the Commonwealth a sellout of the power that was the Soviet Union. Their numbers are small and their politics confused, but this is an outlet for people's anger, and there is more of that here all the time. John Donvan, ABC News. Moscow. The rapid pace of political change in what was the Soviet Union has created more confusion than improvement, especially in the economy. Take, for example, the nightmare of holiday shopping in Moscow. ABC's Mike Lee is there. Every morning before dawn, a security guard at Moscow's largest toy store unlocks the door, runs for cover. Stampeding shoppers have no idea what, if anything, will be for sale inside. Inside, there are no toys to buy. Toys are like food. There are major problems with production and distribution. There's only one item for sale, a woman's sweater, one style and one size. Too small to fit most of the women who fought their way inside. But the sweater is cheap and can be traded on the street for other items, like toys or food. There are 300 sweaters in stock and 500 warrior shoppers in line. This shopper tried to establish order by assigning everyone a number. The ballpoint pen becomes a symbol of power and abruptly changes hands. Like most aspects of life here, the people find it difficult to be civilized under such harsh conditions with few rules or visible authority. A woman cries out that this man shoved and threatened to kill her if he wasn't allowed to cut in line. The only way to buy a toy in this state toy store is from one of the shadowy private vendors who illegally stalk the corridor. It is a typical example of how black marketeers pay bribes to intercept state-produced goods before they reach the shop, then sell them to a desperate public at 10 times the state price. And with state prices for food and other goods to increase in January, the public could become more and more angry. Mike Lee, ABC News, Moscow. Coming up, more prescriptions for healing an ailing economy. And later, how the Los Angeles Lakers are carrying on without Magic Johnson. And Mervyn Whipple, why the people of one New England town call him Mr. Christmas.
World News Sunday, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Today, Pactred Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Not having any time. Job insecurity. You never needed it more. A new extra strength pain reliever made to get today's tough headaches before they really get you. 1,000 milligrams, stomach guard, and the name Bayer. That should ease your mind. Introducing new extra strength Bayer Plus. Now there's no pain you can't bear. In Lebanon today, a body believed to be the remains of slain American hostage Lieutenant Colonel William Higgins was delivered to the morgue at American University. Police said the body was found on a street last night after an anonymous phone call. No positive identification has yet been made. Back in this country, in Texas, at least 14 people have died in floods sparked by six days of record-breaking rainfall. Authorities are searching for three other people reported missing and they fear the death toll will climb. Many roads have been closed, and helicopters have been used to evacuate some people from flooded areas. In a television interview broadcast today, President Bush warned critics not to count him out, despite his recent plunge in the polls. He vowed to get the economy turned around and thus restore his political fortunes. But Democratic presidential hopefuls and economic analysts were on TV today also, pushing some economic remedies of their own. ABC's Bettina Gregory reports. The president stayed close to the White House today, attending services at a nearby church. But Mr. Bush has become a man with an economic mission. Appearing on cable television C-SPAN, the president admitted it's not easy to reverse the recession. Trying to cope with this economy is extraordinarily difficult. I'm determined to succeed, but... Uh, uh, I, I learned firsthand in, in 1991 that the buck does stop there on that desk and properly so. Two Democrats who'd like oh, yeah. to replace Mr. Bush uh, in the Oval Office offered their economic solutions. Uh, on This Week with David Brinkley, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton pushed tax cuts for the middle class. You can't build consumer confidence without cash. It is just a short-term measure. We need to go further with working families.